Welcome everyone to section number five. This is the average value of a function. And in this video, right, I'm mainly gonna describe to you kind of what is this thing, this average value of a function. We're gonna talk a little bit about the calculations that go behind this. Uh, and then right, we're actually gonna relate together this average value of a function with averages of finite sets, right? They actually do have a relationship here. Okay, so starting off, even before I get into how do we calculate this thing, I want to tell you about the concept, right? What exactly is this thing? And so I'd like to imagine, right, that I'm kind of, I've built an ant farm sort of deal. So imagine that this is all of maybe the sand uh, or something or the dirt. And so I have an ant farm kind of between these things. And if you were to kind of I'll imagine you were, uh, you know, could get in there actually. And you have on your big boots and stuff like this. Be careful, I'd be falling, I suppose. But okay, so something like this. And if you were to start jumping up and down a bunch, right, what would happen? Or if you were to maybe have a shovel or something like this, maybe kind of as you continue to shovel over this dirt, right, maybe eventually it starts to look something like this. Right, so you haven't taken any of the dirt out of the ant farm. You haven't displaced it, uh, you know, that much. But you're just kind of moving it along, you know, kind of inside of the ant farm, kind of leveling it out sort of deal. And if you were to continue to do this, I'll draw my little person one more time here. Same thing with the boots and all that sort of stuff. Again, or a shovel or whatever, right? But you're jumping up and down, you're kind of flattening out all of this dirt. If you were to continue to do this, what would happen eventually is that maybe it would be like perfectly level. You actually just have a straight line here sort of deal. And again, kind of the area really hasn't changed, but we've kind of leveled out this dirt or this area in some sense. And this is the idea for the average value of a function. Really, sometimes it's called, right, the average height of a function. So here in this original one, kind of the height changes a lot. It was up here, then it comes down, then it comes back up. If you want to know kind of on average, right, how tall are these mounds, right? Kind of you level it out and you'd say maybe, okay, on average, it's this tall right here. And maybe that's somewhere between the maximum and the minimum. I just freehanded this, so it may not be exact, but this is the idea. All right, let me go ahead. I'll continue finishing up my drawing here. This is now a happy person, right? So it's all level, work is done. Hooray. Okay, there we go. So Let's go over now, how could we calculate this out? So again, kind of this height right here, this is the average height or the average value of the function. I'm gonna go ahead and denote this F sub av. It kind of looks like fav, but F and then in the subscript, average av. Okay, and again, really the area hasn't changed at all. So if I go back to this original picture, if I wanted to calculate this area, right, maybe I would do the integral from A to B of this function, F of X, dx. And through doing a little bit of work, maybe a long equal sign here sort of deal, this has become a rectangle. The height of the rectangle is this average value, so this is f sub av. So that's the height times the width of the rectangle. Well, if I start off at a and at end at b, right, this must be b minus a. So the width here is b minus a, so times b minus a. And so if I want to actually solve, right, and get a formula for what is the average value, the average height of a function, well, let's go ahead and divide by b minus a on both sides, and I'm gonna get the average value of a function is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx times one over b minus a, right? I just divide by this b minus a on both sides, and there we go, and now I have a formula that gives me out the average value of a function. So let's go ahead and formalize this here, put it in a box, right? So again, the average value of a function f of x on the interval from a to b is defined as one over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And again, really this is kind of this idea right here. This is the concept, is that we're not kind of taking the area away, we're just kind of redistributing it, evening it out, and seeing what is that average height. And again, I like to think of this as ant farms, right? Because this kind of has some restriction in dimensions. Instead of three, it's kind of two-dimensional. But anyway, that's all side note. 
So now that we have the concept down, let's go ahead and actually try to apply this and see kind of what are some typical problems we could see on homework, quizzes, exams, stuff like this. So I have two examples here for you. I'd like you to pause the video, try to get as far as you can on both of these examples, and then I'll go ahead and talk through them. So again, take 90 seconds or so, get as far as you can, and then I'll spoil the surprise. All right, so I just have the setup done here. I haven't gone and evaluated it completely, but let's go ahead and make sure that we're correct up to this point. So first of all, the average value, we know this is supposed to be 1 over b minus a. So in my first case, I have a is 0 and b is 4 times the integral from a to b, so that's from 0 to 4, of our function with respect to x. So our function is the root function. That's the same thing as x to the 1 half power. So this is the setup here. For our second problem, I have 1 over b minus a. So now, again, my a is 0 and my b is pi times the integral from 0 to pi, that's from a to b, right, of sine of x dx. Because, again, my function is the sine function in this case. All right, so let's go ahead and evaluate this out. So I'm going to have 1 fourth. And now I'm going to find the antiderivative of x to the 1 half power. So this is going to have an x to the 3 halves in it. And let me go ahead and put a 2 thirds here. So again, we can take the derivative of this and double check. Do we get back to where we started? Yes. Good. And now we go ahead and evaluate this from 0 to 4. So let's see. There's going to be a little bit of cancellation here. So I'm going to have 1 sixth. And then when I plug in 4, 4, and I need to raise this to the 3 halves power. So I'm going to raise it to the 1 half power. So 4 to the 1 half power is going to be 2. That's the square root of 4. And then if I cube that, right, because I have to raise it to the 3 halves power altogether. So if I cube that, that's going to be 8. And then I subtract away 0 raised to the 3 halves power. That's just going to be 0. And so let's see, 8 divided by 6, this is going to give me 4 thirds altogether. So that's saying that the average value or the average height of this function is four thirds. Now, since this is the first one that we've gone ahead and calculated out, I thought it'd be a good idea to visualize this together. So I went ahead and I pulled up the Desmos, right? And I graphed our function square root of x on the interval from zero to four. So here's the square root function on the interval from zero to four. And if you'd like to, you can go ahead and shade. So this is the code right here to kind of shade, right? So this is all of the area underneath the function on the interval from zero to four. And then I went ahead and I wrote down our average value. So f sub av is 4 thirds. So if we go ahead and jot that down, yeah, this kind of makes sense, right? If I was to take all of the dirt over here, for instance, and kind of displace it and put it over here, right, that looks kind of reasonable for an average height. Okay, moreover, you can also shade in if you'd like kind of the area underneath that. So here's all of the blue area here. And now again, the thing that I'm thinking about is if I took all of this green area up here, would it perfectly fill in all of this lightly shaded blue area down here? And yeah, it, it at least seems reasonable, right? If I got out that the average value was something like, oh, ridiculous, let's go ahead and say like the average value was four or something like this, this would be rather alarming, right? There's no way that this could happen. I know it has to be at least a number somewhere between zero and two, right? So somewhere between 0 and 2, because again, kind of the function starts off at 0 and ends with a height of 2. So 4 thirds at least seems like a reasonable guess. All right, switching back, let's go ahead and solve out part b here. So this is going to be equal to 1 over pi. The antiderivative of sine, I believe, is negative cosine. Again, go ahead and take the derivative of this, see that you get back to the original value. Plug in 0, plug in pi. So let's see, I'm going to have 1 over pi. And if I plug in pi into cosine, I would get out negative 1. Luckily, there's this extra negative sign here. So that'd be negative negative 1. So that becomes positive 1. And then I subtract away. But again, there's this negative sign. So this is really like adding. Uh, and now I need to plug in 0 everywhere I see it, x. So cosine of 0 is 1. So all together here, I get 2 over pi. Remember, pi is a value that's around 3, so this is around 2 thirds, all things considered. So just as before, let's go ahead and use our technology to graph this and kind of verify that this seems reasonable. So again, kind of sign we know ranges, at least on the interval from 0 to pi, it's going to range between 0 and 1. Okay, so already kind of 2 thirds seems reasonable. 
I can go ahead and graph this average value, which I've plotted down as 2 over pi. So there's the height. And I can also shade underneath it. And we can kind of see that, yeah, it kind of seems reasonable if I took this green area here and kind of distribute it, kind of flattened out this hill, that, yeah, that this would make a reasonable average value. So again, this is the thing that we're calculating out, this average height, or the average value of a function. All right, so I think we got some good practice calculating out the average value of a function. Now, the final objective that I wanted to cover in this video here, relating the average value of a function to averages of finite sets. So the claim is there is actually a relationship, even though kind of this doesn't really look like the good old average of a finite set. So let me go ahead and let's remind ourselves what that is, right? So if you want to take the average of some values, and let's just say n values, but I mean, really quick, let's do kind of a, a mini example here. If I wanted to average together the values 1, 3, and 7, for instance, the way that you would average together those three values, right, is that you would go ahead and you would add them together, 1 plus 3 plus 7, and then you would divide by 3 because there were three numbers. You were trying to find the average of three numbers. So in this case, let's see, I would have 11 thirds. So that would be the average of the set 1, 3, 7. Add them together, divide by 3. So if you wanted to do this in the more general case, right, if I wanted to do the average value of, you know, just n values. So maybe the, here's the first value, here's the second value, and you go all the way up to the nth value then the average value, or sometimes this is called the mean, of the set is denoted by usually y bar, right? So this is the mean or the average. And this is equal to, so the average is equal to, you add them all up, y sub 1, y sub 2, right? the second value, the third value, and you keep on going all the way up to the nth value, the last value in your set, and then you divide by the number of items there are. In this case, there are n items. Okay, so again, this is the average value of a finite set, right? There are only finitely many elements here. In this case, there are n items in this set. So I want to relate this with actually our case when we have kind of infinitely many elements. So again, kind of if we were to average the heights here, right, there are infinitely many heights, right? Because you don't just take them at, you know, kind of integer values, but kind of every number in between. So we're kind of averaging, get, averaging together an infinite set for some extent. So I want to go ahead and relate our equation to this thing right here. So for instance, ours is the average value of a function is 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And for this, we actually need to use the good old definition of a Riemann sum, right? Or kind of what does it mean to be this definite integral here? So I'm going to do 1 over b minus a. And then we had the limit as n goes to infinity, summing up areas of rectangles. So those areas of rectangles, we had heights, given by the right-hand endpoints, times widths, given by this delta x value. And let me go ahead and I want to go and kind of replace delta x. Delta x was, we had a formula for this. It was b minus a over n. And now already you can see that, well, there would be a little bit of cancellation, right? Because b minus a is a constant. We could factor that out of the sum, factor that out of the limit, and it would perfectly cancel with this b minus a here. So let's go ahead and rewrite. This is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity, summing up from i equals 1 to an n, right, all of these areas of rectangles. Now these f of x of i's, right, these are heights. This is supposed to be the heights of the rectangles. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe denote this as y sub i to go ahead and say that these are different heights, right? So let's go ahead and then multiply by 1 over n. But you can actually see here that 1 over n, this is constant with respect to the sum. So we could factor out this 1 over n, right? Again, the only kind of variable here in the sum is the i. The i is the thing that's changing. n is some set thing. So let's go ahead and factor out that n here. So this is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of y sub i. And again, let's go ahead and maybe kind of break this apart, the sigma notation here. So the limit as n goes to infinity, 1 over n, 
And the first thing you would do is you would plug in your first value, so y sub 1. Then you would go ahead and plug in your second value, then your third value, and you would keep on going all the way up to your final value, your nth value. So you can see that we're adding together a bunch of y values, and then we're dividing by n. So if you'd like to, we could actually really make this very similar, right? We could go ahead and rewrite this as y1, y2, adding up all the way to yn, and we're dividing all of that by n, right? Because that's the same thing. Multiplying by the reciprocal is the same thing as division. And so we see that our definition right here is consistent with normal averages. That's why it kind of it deserves this name, average value of a function, because it really is adding up these values, then dividing by n, and we're just letting n go to infinity, right? Because we want to somehow figure out this average of kind of infinitely many values. All right, so that's all I have for you. I hope that this was interesting. It's nice to make these connections with things that we already you know, know about, averages, uh, with you know, this calculus thing, this new thing that we're learning about today. So okay, uh, get started on your homework. I'll see you guys next time.